approach the communion table differently. You see, many times we become traditional, but don't understand what we are doing. The communion is not snacks. The communion is a miracle meal. What kind of meal is the communion? If you are in need of a miracle, you are in the right place. The communion is a miracle meal for endless triumph in our health. The communion, every Sunday that we have communion, we rest assured that miracles take place. I didn't hear loud amen. Amen. (laughs) In John chapter 6, verse 53 and 54. John 6, 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except ye eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink of his blood, ye have no life in you. Verse 54. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood had eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Leviticus 17, 11, it said, the life of the flesh is in the blood. The Holy Communion, therefore, empowers us to live like Christ. Spirit, soul, and body. I know you have been taking it, many of you, for 20 years, but you will see things you didn't know it carries. You don't get things from God because you carry out activity. You get things from God because of understanding. My people are destroyed for they lack knowledge. Not they lack practice. But they lack knowledge. Now, what does the communion make us share? The same order of strength with Christ. The same order of strength with Christ. John 6, 58. The same order. He said, this is that bread which came down from heaven. As your fathers did eat manna and are dead, he that eateth this bread shall live forever. Psalm 105, verse 37, it shows us what kind of strength those that ate manna in the wilderness had. He said, they brought them forth also with silver and gold and there was not one Feeble person among their tribes. Somebody say with me strength. Strength. Louder please. Say strength with strength. Strength. 1 Kings 19 and verse 6. This was even before Jesus came. 1 Kings please 19 and verse 6. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals, and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And you know, after that, he went in the strength of it. Listen to me. Lift your hands, everybody. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, as you partake of this communion, every form of weakness disappears. I'm speaking to somebody who came in here weak and feeble in their body. As you partake of the communion, the wisdom of the communion, every form of feebleness disappears from your body. I didn't hear a louder amen, please. A stronger amen, please. What more? It makes us share, number two, the same order of divine insight with Christ. That's wisdom. The same order of divine insight. is You can't be partaking of the communion and be called foolish. We have the mind of Christ. The same order of divine insight. Luke chapter 24 verse 30. Luke chapter 24 and verse 30 please. And it came to pass as he sat at meat with them. He took bread and blessed it and break it and gave to them. And we understand that after that, their minds became electric. In this scripture, it says their eyes were open. It's not talking of physical eyes. They were not blind before. But their minds were open. 
and he knew them and vanished out of his sight. Lift your hands. As you go to work this week, may you create solutions. Even in the church now, pastors are looking for wise people, not those speaking in tongues. Because he can speak in tongues himself. Wisdom. Wisdom. A sinner to sit down and be teaching you, and you can't even understand. A sinner teaching you, you can't understand. And then you are praying in tongues that the enemy is fighting me. No enemy is fighting you, it's foolishness. Hear hard truth. Don't use everything to cover spirituality. He gave them the communion. Boom! Their eyes were open. Disciples, their eyes were closed. How much more? Else? Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, what is in the flesh? We are treating the wisdom of the communion table. What is in the flesh? Number one, in the flesh or the bread is the life of God. The life of God. John 6, 48 to 51. The life of God. In Leviticus 17, 11, it said, the life of the flesh. So the flesh carries life. Don't partake of the communion. I know you've been here for a lot. Don't do it the same way you've always done it. I mean, when you take that small bread on top of that cup, you are taking great life. Nobody can look at you and finish you. No arrow of the wicked is permitted. Now, hear this. If I be a man of God, anyone that shoots an arrow on you after this communion table, they will not survive to tell the story. We are not playing here. I mean, we are not. We can't be partaking of the communion and remain victims. The life of God is in the flesh. Okay, number two. In the flesh is the rod of God that swallows up the rod of the musicians, magicians, sorry, in our body. Now hear this. In case you took in any poison without knowing, relax yourself. There are rods and there is the rod. And a rod shall come out of the stem of Jesse. Isaiah 11, 1 and 2. That rod is the flesh. Talking about Jesus. So anyone that tried to poison you, you know there are different kinds of poison. Most, most of you may not know that in this part of the world. There is physical poison that you take something and you are going to the restroom. There is spiritual poison. You didn't take anything physically, but they threw something inside you regardless of which kind of poison is in you, causing you discomfort. As you partake of the flesh today, that poison is eradicated. Amen. You find that in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 39 to 41. Oh, sorry, Exodus 7. Exodus 7, verse 11. The rod of God that swallows up the rod of the magicians. Number three, what is in the flesh? The miracle meal. That neutralizes poisons. Neutralizes poisons. So the flesh is a miracle neutralizer. How do I know? Second Kings chapter 4, 39 to 41. If it's not in the Bible, don't believe. Second Kings chapter 4, verse 39 to 41. And one went into the field to gather herbs, and he found a wild vine, and gathered there of wild gods. His lap full and came and shred them into the pot of the pottage, but they knew them not. So they poured out for the men to eat, and it came to pass as they were eating of the pottage that they cried out and said, O oh, thou man of God, there is death in the pot, and they could not eat thereof. And the man of God said, Bring me a meal. And he cast it into the pot, and he said, now your body is like that pot. Somebody's eyes just open. Pour out for the people that they may eat. 
and there was no harm in the pot. So as you are taking the flesh, see your body as the pot. As you partake of it, anything dead or dying in you, whether you know it or you don't know, by the flesh, such poison shall be neutralized. What more? What is in the flesh? Number four. The flesh is the New Testament manner. New Testament manner with greater values than the manner in the wilderness. In Psalm 105, verse 37, we see the manner in the wilderness kept them strong. There was none feeble among their tribe. But in John 6, 58, he introduces the communion as greater than the manner of the wilderness. Meaning that the flesh is another manner of manner. When you partake of it, you are strong and healthy. I stand upon this altar to decree every form of weakness in anyone's health, in their body, from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, the moment this New Testament manna enters into your mouth, every feebleness is destroyed. Amen. I didn't hear louder, amen. amen. What more? What is in the flesh, number five? The flesh supernaturally empowers our insight. So in the flesh is wisdom. In the flesh is wisdom. In Luke 24, verse 30 to 31, Jesus served them the communion, and then suddenly their eyes were open. That talks about wisdom, suddenly knowing what to do. I stand and I believe God with somebody here. As you step out this week, concerning that issue of your life, by the communion, you will know what to do. I didn't hear louder, amen. amen. What is in the blood? What is in the blood? In the blood, number one, is the nature of Christ. The life, the flesh, is in the blood. So, divine nature is in the blood. What is in the blood, number two? In the blood, we share the same blood group with Christ, thereby empowering us to live like him. Now, when you partake of the blood, you are not just partaking of the nature. You are partaking of the same blood group. The same. That means what is not permitted in the blood group of Christ has no business in you. Did I hear your amen? Yeah. Now, from some parts of the world, Africa in particular, when you say sickle cell, people understand what you're talking about. But I thank God for the journeys he has taken me through. I stepped into a nation, and they came to me and told me, here we don't have problem with sickle cell. West Africa is a big testimony. People will be shouting, hey, 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 hey. No naturally born South African can have sickle cell. It's not a prayer point. Their blood refuses it. I'm not talking of mixed blood, though, not the one that you mix, marry from somewhere. That, that's a different case. Naturally born. Their blood refuses it. That's where this revelation hit me hard. If Jesus' blood is in me, there are certain things, HIV, cancer, leukemia, heart disease, the blood doesn't allow it. I say he doesn't allow it. So no matter how many people are aff afflicted, affected, infected, I know my blood group. Therefore, I can have my shoulders tall and say I can never have HIV. It may annoy you, but it's my blood group. I don't know which blood group you want. Whether the one your father gave you. Okay. Blood group, John 6, 57. You belong to the same class. What cannot happen in his body is not permitted to happen in your body. Why? Number three is the reason why. Because every time you partake of the blood, you are having blood transfusion. Amen. <laughs> Just imagine your stained blood giving way and his blood on stain coming in. 
Imagine the blood that carries HIV being flushed out. And imagine his blood that cannot carry HIV being taken in. I mean, there are people who have lived healthy by the communion. No medication. They've been on the communion. Why? Blood transfusion. Man, somebody's about to partake of another blood transfusion. Because when you partake of the blood, you are partaking of his blood. His blood. His blood. Just like when the doctor tells you there's blood transfusion, they are putting a natural man's blood in you. Now, he is putting his blood in you. That's why when you put in the blood of a sickly man or a man with HIV in the body of another who did not have HIV, what happens? When you put the blood of one who cannot have HIV into one and that blood, his own blood is flushed out, HIV disappears. Now, hear this. Most sicknesses are tied to the blood. That's why one of the greatest ways to step out of sickness is by the blood. Somebody say his blood still works. Therefore, as you partake of his blood, may every blood in you that needs to give way, give way in the name of Jesus. What more? Number four, very quickly. In his blood is the spiritual white blood I remember my science teacher at this point. That connotes the soldiers of the body. Now, when your white corpuscles are in, you know, active, there are certain things they fight the moment it enters your body. And what happens when his blood enters? Everything in you that needs to be fought is fought. How is it fought? By the blood. Not by throwing blows, but by the blood. Lift your hands. I stand here to declare, if this is the word, everything in your body called sickness or disease that must be fought by the blood, it is fought and the victory is given to you. In the name of Jesus. That's the wisdom of the communion table. So we are not here to partake of anything religiously. We are here to partake of the communion today with wisdom. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It's a new day for you. Amen. Lift your hands. Lord, as I partake of the communion today, let the wisdom I have caught become a reality in my life. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Let it become a reality in my life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name.